Hello, I'm Clyde List. Welcome to the Moorback Museum's model of Old Town Sherwood. You would have to join the Peace Corps to visit a similar place today. The streets are made of dirt. The sidewalks are made of wood. Dogs and chickens and cows follow you everywhere you go. Don't trip over the mama so and her piglets by the general store. The air is filled with smoke from slag fires from logging operations. Trees are being turned into cordwood for Portland homes. Progress is everyone's favorite explanation for what's going on. The Industrial Revolution is in full swing. Half the country lives in town. Disgruntled Civil War veterans shout and sometimes, shoot at you from the saloons, but the ladies of the Temperance Union are preaching just as loud from the other side of the street. Machines are making life easier. The doctor and the banker have a car, and maybe you will get one too, when Emil Lovrens opens his Model T, Ford dealership on the corner of First and Pine. Just think of it, town founder, J.C. Smock arrived on 3rd Avenue, an old Indian trail then, by covered wagon at age 4. He lived just long enough to ride in a Model T Ford. Smock's son-in-law, Joe E. Moorback, arrived by train in 1889. What a train it was! A little chug-chug engine with wheels only 30 inches apart. Farmers in the Willamette Valley started it, Scotsmen paid for it, Chinese built it. And these were real Scotsmen too. The president was an earl, the Earl of Airlie. There's a place called Airlie today where they used to physically turn the train around and head it back in our direction. Life was good. People sat for hours listening to a good speech, on any topic. A Sunday morning sermon would never take less than two hours. Arguments at the barbershop and the general store never end. If the train doesn't get here today, who cares? Maybe tomorrow? Once you do climb aboard, don't be surprised if you're asked to help load cordwood in your go-to-meeting clothes, as you never go to town in work clothes. If you're a kid you run alongside the train until you get up the hill and then you jump back on again. The tracks weaved back and forth because the Scots, always thrifty, never put gravel under the cross ties. Joe Moorback called it the Peavine Railway, and the Tri-Weekly. Everyone made fun of the little railroad, but the project was tackled the Oregon way, without help from the federal government. The Southern Pacific Railway Company eventually bought up the stock and ran the line until 1992.